Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So let's continue with our sales situation here uh, because apart from the sales and uh, I think the profile page because we have these two buttons here those are the only things remaining uh, for us to fix. So here we want to do the edit and delete buttons as well but before we do that let's uh, have some pagination here because we have so many records here and we need to paginate them. Now there's a system uh, that Bootstrap actually offers, right? Um, where you can, I don't know if it's here on this page, but when you have tables in Bootstrap, there's a system where that I've seen most uh, programmers actually use the JavaScript pagination that comes with Bootstrap. Now I'm going to tell you that you should never use that pagination for one simple reason. The way it works is it uses JavaScript, okay? So it means it actually loads all the records. So it loads all the records here. So let's say, um, and then it, it, it simply hides them using tables here in JavaScript, using JavaScript. So if you've got one million records it's going to load all of them and then just show you the ones that you want to see using page number here so that method is not good uh, the second best method to use is where you use ajax to reload the page with each uh, next page that comes on and on that way you load new information every time you click the next button but that pagination which is used using JavaScript tables is not good because it loads everything at once and then uh, you have to click through it. It's okay if you have a few tables, uh, a few records uh, rather, maybe a hundred records, that's okay. But anything above that is not good because I've seen this in practice where I've had to, uh, to redesign a website for someone because they use that kind of pagination. And each time they loaded the page, the page would just start loading to infinity. And they are wondering when it's going to stop loading because each record sometimes has an image and those images can really take up memory and space. If you have a mobile device that has little RAM, it's not even going to load the page at all. So please uh, take this into consideration. Do not use the bootstrap pagination system use php instead that way you load a few records at a time into your memory the memory of your browser all right so with that in mind let's go ahead and look at pagination in bootstrap here now what i'm getting here is not the javascript pagination no it's just the buttons that i want that's all so i'm just getting the buttons from bootstrap okay so i'm just looking for the buttons that i like here so without having to go very far, this looks pretty okay. Same as this here. I don't really see a uh, difference here. So we can just copy that. Now you can go ahead and look at all of these and decide which ones really suit your needs. But for me, this one with uh, numbers, not just the numbers, but I want previous next uh, buttons like this. Yeah. Okay, so I've copied that and let's go to our uh, text here and we'll go to our views because this is for the view. So I'm going to go to admin section and the cells. Okay, so right at the bottom here, just after the table, let's just paste this information like this. Okay, so it's inside a nav bar like this. Let me just push this away. So it's inside a nav bar and uh, pagination, previous. Okay, so let's save that and let's see how it looks. So refresh the page and there we go. So we have a nice pagination over here. Now this is unclickable. I don't know for what reason. So let's try and fix that. So there's a previous and it says disabled. So I'm guessing this is the class that is doing that. So let's remove it, check it again. Okay, so now it looks clickable or is it? Not yet for some reason. What's going on, what's going on? Link, page item, page item. So, um, 
page link. Oh, okay. So the reason it's not clickable is because there's no actual link on it. So let's just add an actual. No, there is a link. This is a link. Okay. So what happens is if you don't put the href like this, a link is unclickable then. So what I would do is just put that here like that. This will make it clickable. So let's refresh and now it's uh, clickable. Yes. Okay, great. We are doing good. So now what I want is these to be able to respond to what page I am on right now. Okay, so it says page two, which is not good. And next and so on and so on. Okay. Now, before that, let's deal with uh, paginating here. Let me explain a little bit of how pagination works. Now, pagination is like this. It's pretty easy, actually. So let's go to the cells uh, controller here for a moment. Where is this? Cells bah, 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 controller. Okay, I'm lost. Oh, it's all in the admin, right? Okay, so we are on tab cells, right? And this is what we are reading here. So this is what we need to paginate. Now, pagination is a very simple concept. If you write a whatever query that you're going to write, you see here it says order by ID descending, right? Now, after the query, at the end of the query, regardless what the query is about, if you go to the end of the query and you just say limit, and then you put a limit there, let's say I say limit four. What that means is that it's going to, whatever results it gets, it's just going to stop reading after it gets four results. So that's limit four, okay? So now if I go back here, you see we have quite a number of records here because it's reading all of them. But if I now refresh, you see that I only get four results because I've told it to just limit the results to four. So if I put two there, as you can guess, it's going to limit to two. Okay, so well and good. The only problem is uh, if, because here you see I'm saying order by ID descending, right? So it means it starts from the end of the, uh, of the table reading. So it starts with uh, the very last record and then because I said limit two, it's going to get the last and the second last record because I'm ordering by ID in a descending manner. So here it's actually getting the last two records, these ones right here. So that's so good milk with 10 and nine. And you can see that clearly if I remove this limit so that it reads all records. So you see these two records here and if I come down here, because even here, the order is by ID descending. So it starts with these two. OK, this one and this one. So this is the very last record. This is the second last record. So it only read these two. All right. That's pretty good. So now the issue comes in. What if I want to go to the next page? So let's imagine we're just reading two records at a time. So we're going to get this one and this one as we saw. But now I want to get this one and this one because now this one and this one represent the next page. So this is page one. This would be page two and this would be page three, right? So luckily there's a very simple way to do that. So we can simply tell it how many records to skip before it starts counting the limit. So here it's limiting two, right? Which means it will count one, two and then limit. But we can tell it to shift that counting, to say, okay, ignore the first two, then start counting, right? So if we wanted to ignore uh, the counting first, we can tell it how many lines to ignore. So here we can say uh, offset two, right? Just like that. So offset means ignore. So offset is, it's offsetting the counting. So it starts from the second. Uh, so it's going to ignore the first two results. This is just what it means here. So if I now refresh, okay. So that is uh, an error. You have an error in your uh, SQL syntax. And that, that's because you cannot use offset without limit. Those two go together. So just keep that in mind. Offset needs a limit. So 
I have to put limit and tell it how many to limit. Now I want it to read all of them just so we can see what's going on. So we'll just say limit, <coughs> excuse me. I'll say limit 100 just so it can get all the records. Okay. I'm doing this because I, re I need to add limit if I'm going to add offset. But what I'm saying is just read all of them because I know they're more than, they're less than 100, but skip the first two. So I just want you to see that it can skip those first two. Let me refresh. And as you can see, that one with 10 and nine is gone. Now we're starting with eight and seven, right? So we've gone to the next page. Now, if I wanted to ignore four of them and then we get six and five as the first ones, simple as you can imagine, I'll tell it ignore four of them like this. And then we start from there. So we can use this instead to move between pages. So if I tell it to just limit two and offset two, this is page two, because uh, if I say offset zero, meaning don't offset anything, just start counting from one, it's going to give me 10 and nine, which is the last two records. But if I want the second uh, phase, I'll just say offset two like this. And then it will ignore these first two, which means it reads the next two. And if I want to keep going, I can just say ignore four this time. And just like that, I'm going from page to page. Okay, so as you can see here, the only thing that's changing is the offset. That's it. So by changing the offset, I am moving between pages. Now it's important, as you have noticed here, that the offset is a multiple of the limit because then if you don't do that, you're going to start repeating yourself. Because for example, let's say I tell it to limit four and then I don't care about that being a multiple. So I have these four lines here. And as you can see, there's seven here on the receipt number and there's Omo Sofena there. So this is the last record. But now instead of telling it to offset four, which means go to page two, because it has to be a multiple of this one. Let's say I tell it to offset three instead, which is fine, but I'm going to end up repeating one of these records. If I refresh, as you can see, seven is there. It was the last one on the previous page. Now it's the first one. So there are times when this is nice, where you want the record from the previous page that was on the, at the bottom to be the one at the top on the next page. So you can do that by simply making sure that uh, the offset is one item uh, of a multiple of the limit. Now, remembering all this would be a pain, but there's a simple formula that I use personally, uh, which seems to work all the time. So what can we do? We can do this and just tell us how many items we want per page. So I'm going to call this one the limit, of course. I'm going to say I want four items per page like this, okay, four items per page. Uh, one second here. Okay, so four items per page. Now, the only there are only two uh, parameters here that I need. I need the limit and the offset. So the limit is straightforward. I just need to give it the number. But how do I get the offset? Now, there's a simple formula here of me getting the offset. So the formula is this. So, I'm going to calculate the page number. So I'm going to say page number. So I need the page number because I need to know what page we're on. So page number minus one like this, and then multiply that by the limit. So this is the formula right here. So of course I need to know the page number. So let's imagine we're on page one like this. Okay. So we have everything we need. This is all the formula that we need. So now I have an offset as a variable and a limit as a variable. So instead of act, 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 adding actual numbers here, sorry, I'm going to put the variables. So I'm going to say limit, limit, and then offset and put the offset variable there like so. Okay, so limit a certain number, offset, offset. So the limit we know is four. So it's the same as saying limit four, but then the offset will be calculated depending on the page number. So let's see what's going on here. So if I now refresh like this, you see this is page one. We're on page one. That's the very last record and then down, down the line here. 
And now if I want the next page, all I need to do is put a 2 there. Okay. And if I refresh, I'm on the next page. Just like that. See, it's that simple. And page 3, like that. And refresh. So why exactly does this work? So let's go through it uh, slowly so you can understand how it works. That way you can modify it if you want. So if you want that thing where you want to see uh, one item from the offset of the previous page on the next page, you just subtract offset, whatever the result of offset, just put offset uh, here and say offset uh, minus equals one like this. This will just tell it to remove one from the offset and that will guarantee. But you have to be careful because sometimes you can't have offset negative one because if offset is zero, like on page one, then you put minus one, then that will be a problem. So you have to put an if statement to check if it's not zero, uh, you can't sub, if it's less than zero, which is minus one and uh, lower, then you can always return it to zero because that's the minimum you can put on the offset. Anyway, in any case, why this works is like this. Let's say we're on page one, right? Now, if we re you remember very well, page one is offset zero, yeah, definitely. So what will happen is we're on page one, one minus one is zero, and any number multiplied by zero is zero, of course. So offset will be zero. But if we're on page two, what happens is two minus one is one, and then one multiplied by the limit, which is four, and then offset becomes four. So limit four, offset four is page two. So I guess you catch the, uh, the drift here. So let's put that on page one like this and leave it there. Now, the only problem is we are hard coding these page numbers, but we need these page numbers to be read from the URL here, which is a simple thing to do. So what we will do instead right here is we're going to give a page number. So I'm going to use the operator here to check if there's a get variable uh, for the page number. So that um, is going to be page like this. And then I'll put two question marks like this. This is the what is known as the no safe operator. I think it's called no safe like this because it makes sure that if a value is no or it doesn't exist, it will put the other one here. So what I'm just telling it is that if there's a get variable with the name page, then assign it to page number. If this doesn't exist or it's empty, then put one there instead. So if there's no page number, we're on page one. This is literally what I'm saying here. But if there is, then let's get that one instead. So just with that, we are now able to manipulate things from here. So I just need to say and right there. So I'm going to say and page is equal to one like this. So we are on page one, of course. But if I put two there like this, then we've moved to page two. If I put three, we are moving to page three. Let's try page 30. Okay, so no results because there's nothing on page 30. Uh, let's go to page five, nothing. Page four, there we go. We just have two records. Page three, okay, that's 30. Okay, so you get the idea now. Just by changing that URL in there, we can change which page number we are on. And the way to change a URL is through links, right? So we just need to make sure that these links actually link to a page number that we want. So let's see how we can do that in the next video.